Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, April 12th, 2022, Selectors Meeting. All the selectmen, well, four of the select board is here. <laughs> is we have Noah on Zoom. We have the town manager. Is uh, we have Patty, the town clerk. We have the town planner. And, uh, uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. <clears throat> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. the meeting minutes for our March 22nd meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second it. Any discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. <clears throat> There's public comment. Do we have any public comment tonight? No public comment. We have no public hearing. Uh, reports of committees. Um, I do want to take a couple minutes here. Um, not really a committee. I just want to do a brief rundown of the workshop that the select board had with the uh, planning board a couple weeks ago. Um, the impetus for this was uh, <clears throat> is there was a call for so, um, moratoriums and bans on solar parks and on cannabis and subdivisions and we decided that we should sit down with the planning board and discuss this and try to work our way through this um, I thought we had a lot of good information on that yeah yep. that workshop yep. is a lot was covered um, <clears throat> I'm gonna say right now that it, right now it doesn't look like we have any moratoriums on the horizon um, I just want to. I want to make a couple, couple points about, you know, the whole call for moratoriums. You know, we we'll start with the solar arrays or solar farms. Um, most people don't realize that we have solar farms already approved in Berwick, and we have another one in the works. Is if you ask people where these solar farms are, most of them can't tell you where they are. Is, uh, if I remember correctly, two of them. Two of them are proposed for uh, Route 236 and one just off of Route 9, one at the end of Hubbard Road out towards Lebanon. And, um, so years ago when we were going over our comprehensive plan and our zoning, we looked at where we wanted to have growth, commercial growth and business growth, and Route 4, 236, and Route 9 were all named in there. So, these, these facilities proposed coming off of 236 and Route 9, you know, is, they're called solar farms, solar arrays, but really to me they're more of an industrial or a commercial thing. And if somebody came to Berwick and bought 40 acres off of Route 9 and decided they wanted to put in a factory like Pratt & Whitney or something like that, I think we'd be having a much different conversation here. It's still development, it's still 40 acres, is still impervious service, surface and runoff, but it would change the topic, it would change the tone of this, the conversation, I think. And the same thing with cannabis. You know, there are people that are upset and think we need to, you know, ban it, outlaw it, put a moratorium on it, a cap it. But if we had four microbreweries in town and two more wanted to come in, would we be saying we need a cap? Do we need a moratorium? Do we well, need they, a ban? They put a cap on pizza joints in summer's week <clears throat> last week, didn't they? There's, uh, so, you know, we have microbreweries yes, summer's right. instead of cannabis facilities. So there's a difference there, but let will change the tone just a little bit more. Instead of saying we have four microbreweries, we have four bars. Now, all of a sudden you're saying we have four bars and two more bars are coming in. It's a much different conversation. So. We have to look at the way these things are put out there. And the same thing with the subdivisions. Is really, we've had very few major subdivisions over the last several years. You know, it seems like one or two, maybe every year or so. 
But what people don't talk about is the 20 or 30 houses that go in on individual lots. You know, just as many as a subdivision, but you don't talk about it. And some of these, some of these people, there, there are large landowners in Berwick that have lots of different lots, and they can come in, and they have been coming in, and putting houses on these lots. So is that a subdivision in its own right? So I, I just, these are things that you know, people need to talk about. People need to think about when we're talking about these moratoriums and how we're talking about them. You know, <clears throat> we live in a democratic, capitalist society. We make our rules by voting. If people want to change things, come down and make proposals. Come down and work with the planning board. Come down and work with planning and make these changes. Work with us. But then again, we're capitalists and people are supposed to have the ability to make money on their properties. So who are we to stop people from making money on their properties? You know, a lot of people that I see and hear about complaining is most of them are living in houses that were built in the last 20 years and they haven't been here 20 years. You know, so when do we do that retroactive moratorium? 20 years ago? You know, people are moving into town constantly and I think that for the most part it's a big asset to, to, to Berwick. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, look at the board here. Look at the planning board. Look at the volunteers that come into Berwick. And they move to Berwick specifically because of what's going on here. It's a positive thing. So I think that you know, working together as a community, as a town, through the processes we have, is that we can work this through. And we can continue growing, but in a controlled fashion. It's my rant for the night, I guess. <laughs> no, that was good, Tom. Well, it, really it, you know, like I said, it's just a matter of context. When you start talking about you no know, moratoriums and bans, is you know you have a moratorium for one thing. Why not a moratorium for another thing? And then a moratorium enough for another thing. And you no, know, that's not the way we you no know, move forward in town. Well, all right, the posted departments we have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ed, we haven't had a chance to go over that. It was just handed to us, so that's something I think we need to you know, look at and talk about. Um, appointments, presentations, and other guests. We have an appointment to the planning board for an alternate member. Now, this is uh, kind of confusing because a couple weeks ago we had mm -hmm. the same thing, and we had one applicant here and not the other, and tonight we have one applicant here and not the other. Um, is John Lapierre Jr. came down last time he was here, um, is, uh, expressed his desire, and Matthew Henry at that time couldn't come down. I'm assuming you are Matthew Henry. That is I. Is, uh, could you please step to the podium? Sure thing. And uh, let's hear what you have to say. Well, first of all, nice to meet you all face to face. My name is Matthew Scott Henry. Um, I've had family, natives in, in town. I've I don't know if you've read my letter of intent. Oh, yeah. But essentially, uh, this is it in person. Um, really, I didn't know where home was, but Berwick's always been my home. I have two employees for the business that I own off Hubbard Road, 467 Hubbard Road is the house that I own. Um, I just put up a medical marijuana facility. And uh, really, I'm just here to fight the good fight. James knows that. I've told him that before. Um, I have, I'm very neutral when it comes to politics, so... I think, and I'm very, I have a college education, sports and agro science degree. I've educa I'm college educated, you know, I'm very neutral when it comes to politics. I see myself as a good chair, a good seat at the chair, to be honest. Um, I'm not biased on anything, you know. I agree with what you just said about how <clears throat> moving forward, you know, moratorium with microbreweries. I completely agree with what you just said. But, um, yeah, essentially, I'm just here to fight the good fight. I'm young. I might be young to a lot of you, but uh, at some point, you know, young people are going to have to take over. So, you know, I do want to get my foot in the door, one whether it be here or somewhere else. Um, and, yeah, I, I do look forward to working with the town of Berwick, you know, as I am a taxpayer and I own a business here and both of my employees are Berwick residents. Yeah, I'm welcome. Any questions, please, by all means. Uh, 
I have a question. Yeah. Howdy. Uh, yeah. Um, the planning board is a is a great place to 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 learn a lot of stuff about what's going on in town, upcoming projects, stuff like that. But it's also a lot of um, you're interacting with a lot of the public and sometimes not on their best day. Um, are you good with dealing with the public in that sense? Hi. Uh, yes. Are you okay with possibly getting verbally abused and, you know, beaten oh, up for... Oh, listen, listen, I've, I've, I've taken much worse. I can promise you that. <clears throat> Not to laugh. Yes, I, I, I can. I can deal with it with a verbal abusement. I'm not saying you will get verbally abused. I'm just I, saying I it's happened. You, you know, you want to you want to make sure that people have the right temperament for it. Yes, I, I'm 100 percent, 1,000 percent positive I can be verbally abused and not go home and cry about it. We'll put that to the test. <laughs> <laughs> to the test. Go for it right now. No. Any other questions for Matt? Is um, <clears throat> I think I guess I'm going to follow up with Mike. I mean, I'm speaking, but he wasn't here at the last meeting and we didn't allow Mr. Lightyear to speak. Right, at the last meeting. right. Just, so, um, you know, this is, uh, yeah, um, is yeah, well, I, I was gonna, I was gonna speak about that. Is I you can sit down now if you like. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, we've had two people. I, I, I'm pretty sure John Lapier Jr. is still interested in being on. He hasn't said otherwise. Um, and uh, you know, we did, we did give you know Matt the opportunity to come and speak. Um, and I, I know a little bit of the backstory here is I know that Matt had expressed an interest, you know, earlier in being on the planning board, and. Uh, you know, he was asked to get his letter of intent in, and in the interim, is John got his in. Is you know, I see John's is dated on March 15th, and Matthew's is dated March 21st. So, even though I know you had expressed intent before, is officially. John is the one that got his letter in intent in first, so. Um, was there a cutoff? No, there isn't. But it is in the past we've we've looked at that, you know, in in seeing who had the 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 uh, you know asked first about it. But is again, I think that we need to find out if John is still interested and give him the opportunity to come down here. Um, it is only fair. We did the same thing for Matt, so is, you know, if you want to come back again for another uh, meeting. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say my suggestion is, Matt, if you're okay coming back to the next meeting, if we could touch base with John. Not a problem. <laughs> just to make, I, I think it's just fair right. to give yeah. both an opportunity to right. have quality, questions quality, together. Absolutely. Yeah. Quality, <laughs> so, absolutely. So, so I guess this one's going to be on the table again. So, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you can get in touch with John and just see if he's still interested and find out. All right, thank you. Is that brings us to unfinished business. We have nothing under that right now. Is town manager's report. A request for qualifications was sent out to three firms that have knowledge of the downtown. <clears throat> We've heard back from two firms who are seriously interested. Uh, the process is um, like to put together a uh, interview team and maybe a, a panel of five with a select board member or two on that group. Interview the firm, uh, then come back with a recommendation to the entire board. The, this engineer firm will help pretty much manage the $3 million that we, we got, help fully engineer the projects, help sequence, interface with dif the different entities, CMP, the different. Uh, Great Falls Construction. Also, they will help us go out and seek further grant funding as part of that request for qualification. So that's coming soon. We'll be more on that for the next meeting. Um, I dropped off a memo on the Best Moore property. And what happened is uh, 
Miss Moore, when it was time to make the payment, she said she was not prepared to pay the legal fees and the taxes for this year. So we discussed with legal and there's a proposed amended agreement. And, um, and this would help facilitate a $24,000 payment in the short term, but also ensure that um, we have um, leverage to ensure that uh, once the payment's made and we'll get, we'll be able to recoup our legal fees. So the proposed amendment is to pay up to $23,940.95 in debt at the closing, the town will agree to transfer the deed back to Linda in exchange for a promissory note back to the town, the collateral of which is a mortgage on the property. We have conveyed the promissory note will guarantee payment of the remaining balance, $4,500 in due taxes and attorney's fees to date. So I'm just looking for a motion to approve the amended agreement on 17 Cranberry, Mode, Cranberry Meadow Road as recommended by legal counsel. Um, I'll make the motion to approve the amended agreement on 17 Cranberry Meadow Road as recommended by legal counsel. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? <clears throat> yeah, I, I have a couple of questions, James. Yep. So, um, so I'm just looking over this. You, we, we get the nearly $24,000 Just going over this again, the first time I've really seen it. So is when when exactly will the town be getting their money? Is she, it's not, it looks like she's, she's looking to sell the property or transfer ownership, is that it? So the town currently owns it. It's part of an old um, land installment purchase. purchase. Right. Um, we have, and this has been going on for two to three years right, now. Right, right. Um, and through media, I mean, it's been ongoing mediation and, and litigation. The, this agreement helps prevent kind of starting that cycle all over again. It allows the lump payment, which they're, they, they have. And once they have the property in their ownership, they're able to go out and secure further funding to be able to pay off the subsequent fees. Okay. Yeah, so this just is look this cuts it out the, the lawyers and the mediation and everything all over again for a second cycle. Right. And we all know how expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In time consuming. Right. So um, any further discussion? No. I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. The last piece I have is on um, a proposed credit enhancement agreement, and this is to meet the goal of a stabilized taxes for um, the proposed uh, for the buyer of 10 School Street, the old fire station. Um, I think it's a, it's a good deal for the town. Um, the property right now, the property value we see is zero because it's town-owned property. Once it goes to um, a public, or a privately owned property, it's close to seven hundred thousand dollars of value. Um, in, the, in the credit enhancement agreement, it has a built-in incentive um, where they get for eleven years anything above seven hundred thousand in the value, they get back their taxes. So it stabilizes the taxes that they, they pay. Uh, but again, we see that first seven hundred thousand in in revenue. Okay. So. There's a hearing scheduled for the 26th. Um, I'll have a look at finalize the documents with the um, purchaser. Um, and that's to meet the pur purchase and sale and try to get everything wrapped up and, and keeping it on track so they can, they can close on the property. Are there any questions on? Yeah, everything seems to be going forward with the sale otherwise. Yep. Yep. So, yep. And, uh, no. No, the assessed value. Yeah, the sale is actually less. 
Yeah, it's the, yeah. Yeah, no, it is, um, it is uh, we had it assessed at nearly 700,000. And uh, that's one of the things we talked about with, you know, with the sale. Uh, the sale price was less than that, but, you know, the buyer is agreeing to uh, have it assessed at the 700,000. So, okay. I, I, yeah. I get, I just, so. Yep. Any other questions for James? No. Nope. Um, I have nothing under Swartman's communications. And uh, account payable. <clears throat> Payroll warrant number 59 for March 31st, 2022, for the amount of $75,482.76. We have a payroll warrant number 60 for April 7th, 2022 for the amount of $86,319.80. We have account payable warrant number 62 for April 12th, 2022 for the amount of one million twenty-eight thousand four hundred sixteen dollars and six cents And we have a payroll warrant number 61 for April 14th, 2022, for the amount of $71,792.68. I'll make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any discussion? Nope. If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. That brings us to new business, foreclosed property bids on 46 Route 236. There we go. All right. We had uh, eight returns. Um, I'm going to read down through them is we have one from Mark Vanutka, I guess, $7,686. William Dame for the amount of $32,600. John Corliss for the amount of $55,000. Paul Kennedy for the amount of $50,365. Michael Garis, Garios? is for the amount of $51,101.01. He likes his ones. Mm -hmm. Lucille That's Morin right. for the amount of $40,000. James Guy for the amount of $30,028. And Lisa Rushalo for the amount of $12,760. It's uh, not a dead one cent. He really he must be good at the prices, right? I bet you he wins all that. <laughs> just about to say, just trying to guess what people are going to bid and try to get that extra penny, right? Yeah. Well, I, I would I would love if somebody had matched his bid exactly, but it was off by one penny, and that was the deciding factor. Yeah. Can you imagine? It is uh, when I first got back on the board, we doing bids for um, one of the trucks from the highway department, and guy um, every every bid he ever brought in was. One two three four. One two three four. One thousand two hundred thirty-four dollars, or twelve dollars and thirty-four cents. So, you know, it was always the same. So, so you know, I guess that answers our questions we had about whether we needed to put it out for a realtor or anything. Um, <clears throat> it looks to me like you no. Know, John Corliss is the high bid. Is <clears throat> I don't know of any reason not to award it to him. Do we have that amount was he had no it's fifty five thousand dollars, correct? Yes, right. Sir. Yep. Do we have uh, I think uh, that's a probably the uh, that's a good amount. I think probably based on previous discussions, looking at the property, if we did get a realtor involved and ended up having to pay their fees, we probably would not be much more ahead than where we are at. So no, I agree. No, because whoever buys it has to deal with the trailer and everything on it, so that's the cost to them. Um, do we have a motion? I move that we accept the bid for the property on two thirty. It's two thirty six, right? Yep. yep. Yes. Um, uh, for fifty five thousand dollars from uh, is John Corliss. Yes. Correct. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
All right, I'll go through the roll. Is Mike? Yep. yep. Noah? Yes. Linda? I'll abstain. We'll abstain, yep. Is Mike? Ah, uh, yes. And myself is a yes. Four with one abstention. Yeah, I, I agree with Noah. If we had gone through a realtor, we probably wouldn't have gotten much more than that anyways. If so. not after everything's done. Right. So, all right. So now we have a request to write off a personal property account, tax account, number 854. And this is for a um, company that is no longer in business. The owner stated they moved out of the property months before the end of 2021 and waiting for his lease to expire so he would not be paying the taxes. Said this is the only remaining outstanding account for fiscal year 2021. All other accounts have been collected through the year of 2021. Um, what is this mainly loud out of School Street? Mainly loud. What so is that? It's a medical marijuana from 398 School Street from that facility. Okay. They have, sometimes they have tenant, there's some turnover in those, in those spaces. Okay. So they just, they went out of business, didn't tell assessing to get the, you know, next year's charge to avoid it. They just didn't okay. notify assessing. Yeah, I'm sure there's somebody else moved right into that spot and we just, that's their equipment. Oh, okay. Yeah. When do we, uh, when, when is the assessing calendar for? Like from what month to what month? Like, like I just, I, I just, I had a business in Stanford. I moved out of Stanford, but I had to still pay the taxes for that year because I was still in town after the taxes were assessed, which was like April. So, I mean, are they, is it just the calendar year or what? So the date on this is actually September 2nd, 2020, for fiscal year 21. And right. He's stating that he moved out prior to the end of fiscal 21. So where did, I guess it's the follow-up on Noah's question. You know, does he think in 2021 is when he's out, or is there money due from 2020? Yeah, this is 19. I, mean, I don't know if there's a program, you know. So this, you know, this comes down to, you know, this is something that we've gone through year after year with personal property accounts. Um, we've sent them to collection agencies. We've tried to do the collections ourselves, and we never get anywhere with it. Is um, especially if people are no longer in town. Is so it's eight hundred and fifty-one dollars and twenty-nine cents right. is the amount we're talking about. Um, so that becomes, you know, how do we how do we go about collecting this? If you know we, we don't write it off, is are we going to just keep sending notices? Is you know do we just keep running our bills up? Is it something you can take your small grant? I don't believe as a town we can go to small claims. Can't put a lien? He's not in business. Yeah. Oh, no real estate or anything? No, no. Don't no. no waste that time. Yeah, no, Mark and I have been through this. We, we, yeah. we went with the Thomas Collection Agency once, and we had, you know, like $15,000 of unclaimed personal property tax, and we got, I think, maybe $40 out of that. Really? Yeah, because they just ignore it, right. you know? They just they just ignore it. Is um, you know if they live in town, there's a diff that's different. You know, is I'll go knock on their door. This guy doesn't have it. So, um, so I'm um, is you know before Lisa it was it was Maureen Finger, our, our accountant was our finance director. Is she would go through it every year with us the same thing, um, and, and she's actually the one that finally convinced me for the smaller ones that it's not worth the town's. Time. time and okay. money, you no, know, because now we're going to start getting into, you no, know, paying for um, certified letters and things like that. So we, we just keep piling on debt with no realistic, 
means of collecting. Well, we can always send it to a collection agency and forget about it. If they, if they get it, they get it. Yeah. If not, yeah. Well, like I said, we've did so, that before. Remember, we went with the Thomas agency. It won't cost us any money, though. You no, know? they they take it. They take a percentage. So what? You know, but than, yeah, we're getting something out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, find find a collection agency. They'll take on a eight hundred and fifty dollar debt for us. Yeah. yeah. So. Zero. Um. So, do we have a motion to write off the personal property account? I'll make the motion. Yeah. I'll second it. For personal property account, 854. Um, I think we've discussed it enough. Yeah. Yes, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. Now the request to recombine the special recreation revenue funds. <clears throat> I forgot we even had the ice skating rink fun spill. Is that that one they had right out there on the corner? Well, the we ice? tried it. We tried it up at the yeah. old Estabrook School a couple of years, and then we tried it out on the corner and free station, right? Did we try it over by the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, on the basketball court over there, yeah. and and the weather never cooperated. They never froze. Yeah. Yeah, we had. I think we had one good night of skating one time. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three hundred and fifty dollars in the ice skating rink fund. And then there's one thousand seven hundred and forty-eight dollars and fifty cents in the community center fund, and that dates back to the old Estabrook School. Is that one time there was talk about taking the old gymnasium and converting that into a community center, and there was a uh, a fund and fundraising started for that, yeah. and it never went anywhere, okay. and so that money's just been sitting there now. That facility is now the the uh, part of the police department so uh, so we have the 350 from the ice skating rink fund and 1748 50 from the community center fund you know Lisa writes that <clears throat> no activity since 2017 so combine them both <clears throat> and uh, put them into the recreation expense budget I'll make a motion that we combine the two accounts, uh, move all the money into the registry, uh, registration revenue fund. Right. Yeah, I'll second. All right. Um, I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. So, <clears throat> application for a special taste testing event on Four Circuit Road no. by Jay Gray. Like a good time. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> reading through this earlier. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is at the, the, the Dunn's Farm, actually. It's May 7th, 2022. Oddity by the Ocean is the name of the event. Is that Linda from the Zoom? Is that, is that you, Jay? Or is that. I don't know. The top right there. Yeah, it just says Linda. I don't know. No. You can hear it. No, I have to hear it. I thought the Jay um, last morning. Speaker in your mouth. Are you trying to talk? Hello? You need to talk to them. Hello? Hello? Jay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hey. I'm trying to figure out video. Bear with me here. That's yeah, all right. I know all about it. <laughs> So, um, mm -hmm. we don't have a picture, but we can hear you. So we can yeah. go from there. We don't need to okay. see you. We don't need to see you, honestly. Oh, uh, well, you're missing out on quite a quite a picture, though. My cats <laughs> are uh, jumping all over my computer while I try to talk to you. So, <laughs> uh, um, could you give us a little background about what this is and what's going on? Yeah, so we are we're, we opened our brewery Odd by Nature in Cape Netic, Maine, uh, about nine months ago, um, and we also own Food for Thought, which is our outdoor beer garden and restaurant in uh, Ogunquit, and we opened that about three years ago. So we're planning to uh, have a one-year anniversary to celebrate the brewery, and we invited twenty-five of literally the best breweries on earth that are our dear friends from all over the country. For, whether it be California and uh, Miami or 
parishes from Louisiana, like literally all over the country to come up and celebrate with us. So what we're doing is we've uh, sold our tickets. We're actually sold out for the festival a month in advance, which is we never thought that was going to happen, but we're very lucky that it did happen. Um, and basically, we have 500 people coming. Um, we're doing a VIP session, which is from 11 to 12. For one hour, they get the head start on everybody else. And then there's a three-hour period after that where uh, everyone else gets to come in. And we have four-ounce taster glasses that everyone gets. And everybody gets little four-ounce tasters of about 50 different beers from 25 different breweries. So each brewery brings two different uh, small kegs, the logs, if you will, or slims. Um, and then every brewery pours a little taste for everybody. So people go around, wait online. We also have uh, three different uh, food options that we're doing as Food for Thought as the vendor. So we have a, uh, a grilled cheese station that we're doing with like Nashville hot chicken grilled cheeses and Korean pulled pork, uh, tomato bacon basil, some fun stuff there. Um, we also have a sausage, a homemade sausage hot dog uh, station as well. And then we're doing uh, two different lobster rolls, a uh, garlic butter lobster roll, and then a candy bacon lobster roll, along with uh, whoopie pies from Anthony's that's near us that they're baking as well. Um, so we have plenty of food. We have two pallets of water that's being donated by a uh, water vendor um, that's helping promote the, uh, the event. So we'll have tons of water for everybody. Uh, we have ample parking for everyone. We're going to have over 25 different volunteers to help us uh, with the space setting up Friday at Dunn Farm, um, along with Denise and her husband as well. We have portal potties coming into the space, which we have eight that are coming in, along with two that are on site as well. So there'll be 10 total bathrooms. Um, and then on top of that, we also, uh, you know, we'll be helping with the cleanup. We have some parking signs we have to uh, kind of direct people from the main road. And then we're going to have two volunteers with flags directing people off the main road to help with parking as well. Um, I've been to these festivals for the better part of the last seven years, and most of them are considerably bigger than this. Um, we were just in Miami over the last weekend. Uh, I just got back yesterday. And Wakefest, which is one of the biggest in the country, has over 2,000 people to it. Um, and I've seen a lot of them. I feel pretty confident that we're going to be able to have an amazing event. Um, we also are having live music from Over the Bridge. They're a uh, reggae band from uh, Gloucester that I've known for the better part of a decade. And they just had the number one reggae album on iTunes. So they're awesome, awesome people. Um, we're also, uh, we had a custom pair of uh, sneakers, Air Force One, Jordan Ones. Um, that are being that are being donated, um, and we essentially we purchased them, and then essentially we're uh, auctioning them off with two dollar raffle tickets, and those tickets are then going to be donated to Operation Hope um, and Project Grace, which is a 100% volunteer charity out of Scarborough uh, that's headed up by the uh, police chief there. Um, and essentially, what it is is it's a um, uh, anti opiate charity. Um, where they help uh, subsidize people's methadone and give people rides to and from treatment. Um, our restaurant donates 5% of our proceeds to that charity as well. So we want to be able to do something good for it as well. And just generally, I think it's going to be a great event. I think it's something we want to grow it in size year after year. So we're hoping that as time goes on, we wind up getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And who knows what this could turn into three years from now, but we don't plan on having it anywhere else besides at Denise Farm because she was the first one to take a chance on us. So you, you said the event's already sold out? <laughs> yes, the event's completely sold out. Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know now. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> disappointing 500 people, you know? Before you even get a permit. Can we next door to that? Can we wander over? I got to say. Yeah, uh, originally when we applied, you know, we had our state licenses. We spoke with Denise and we didn't know that. Um, there was anything required from the town because of private property and I came in and spoke with James um, and everyone in town hall and then I went and spoke with the police chief and the fire chief and everybody was super kind and I did that a week ago just to kind of say hi and yeah I just I just didn't know and I apologize for not putting in the application sooner I appreciate you guys trying to expedite this as soon as possible um, you know we want to be good partners for the town of Berwick and you know I live in Cape Nettick I'm local here you know, I, I, I love the area, so I want to be able to do whatever I can to be supportive.
So, I, yep. questions? Yep. Go ahead. So, I did notice that you uh, you have signatures here from the police chief and the fire chief, but you have 500 people parked right off of Route 4, and you don't think you need law enforcement to, to control traffic? That's a pretty busy uh, road. Well, we have, so we hired, uh, we do have a police officer that's going to work the event for security. Um, but in terms of police officers to control parking, I think we should be good again flagging people down from the, the road. I'm not the concerned is... about I'm not concerned about the parking. I'm concerned about when people are coming off of Route Four either to enter the event or leave the event. We've had some mm -hmm. issues on Route Four, especially right up the street at Karen Farms with people turning and that that's five hundred, you know, potentially even a half, two hundred and fifty, three hundred cars that day in that period of time. And so I'm not worried about a police officer at the event. I'm worried about traffic control on Route 4. Yeah, I mean, if that's something that you guys recommend, you know, at the end of the day, if that's something where we think it'll make the event better, that's that's what I care about. I care about having the best experience for the people that are coming. So if that's something that you think would be beneficial, I have no problem with hiring another police officer to help with traffic. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, the thing that would just be devastated is if they're, like as Route 4, it's 55, we do have some safety concerns there, just to add a little level. It would just, it would just be devastating yeah. to hear that. Let's do it. You have a great I'm fully on board for that, and I appreciate the suggestion. Yeah, you know? yeah that, that's, again, I think this is a great event. I'm like yeah. them, is how do you, how do you get in? <laughs> uh, my only concern is that the issue of Route 4 and traffic entering and exiting has been an issue for the last several months, the last year, actually. About well, 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Now, I do expect that if this event is very successful and you guys have a great time, that you'll bring another one back with that 2,000 people. <laughs> That's right. And let us yeah, know I ahead know. of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know how many people we can accommodate. I think, like, we're also not trying to be, you know, that kind of a festival. I yeah. think if we grow in size, it'll be from, you know, 500 to 700, 700 maybe to 1,000. Um, you know, we want to grow gradually, and also I don't want to, you know, the thing that's funny about this is we're going to lose money. Like, we sell 500 tickets at, you know, $70. Everybody thinks we're raking in the money. We're probably going to lose somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen to $20,000 putting on this event. This is not an event where we make any money at all. It's an event where we promote the breweries that are involved, our friends, and obviously our brewery gets promotion as well. And we just get to do something cool that's good for the brand and good for the people that we bring out. And that's all I really care about at this point. You know, hopefully by year three we can break even. But, you know, it's uh, I think it's just going to be a really special event that I think, you know, the state of Maine is known so much for craft beer and nobody really does a beer festival. Um, and we want to try to be the premier beer festival in the state of Maine and grow into that role, which I think would be awesome. I, I love the event. I think it's a great idea. I hope it's very successful. Like I said, my only concern is the, the traffic entering and exiting on the floor. No, absolutely, and I appreciate it. What do I need to do? Is that something where you guys can just put it in there and, and then we just pay it? Or do I need to go back to uh, the police station and just apply for another police officer? I think we put it in the approval of the permit that you add a police officer for that, and then you can work it out with the police chief. He'll put it up as a detail, tell you how much the rate is, and get an officer assigned over there. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, let's let's do that. Thank you again for the suggestion. I appreciate it. Yeah. It is one one good thing is on Circuit Road there is a, it's that circular road so there's yeah. two two ways yeah, to get in and out. out. Yeah. So yeah. that does help a little bit, but I like you said the traffic especially at the end of the thing when everybody's yeah, leaving. Well, Kind so. Farms is busy all day Saturday. Oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're busy all, all the day, time. All the day. So you'll have so. It blows traffic. my mind. Yeah. yeah. So um all right. Any success. other any other uh, questions or comments? No, sounds like a great event. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. That's for sure. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Even oh. if uh, you know, if you guys go down, you know, even if you're not going to the event, you know, buying some raffle tickets, we appreciate it. You know, that we're selling raffle tickets for two dollars. The sneakers are once in a lifetime designs by a really well known design artist who's a friend of ours and yeah, they're really cool, and I, I'm hoping to raise, you know, at least 5000 if not $10,000 for the charity, and they do a lot of really good good work with Operation Hope, and uh, yeah, I think it'll be really cool to be able to give back and, and just have some fun. 
So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. Yeah. No, we're not quite done yet. We have to vote on. We have to vote on it first. Right. I make the motion that we uh, we approve the uh, permit request with one amendment of uh, that he contact the police chief and have a uh, officer assigned for traffic control. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is, yes, but I wish I could go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to you're, you're just gonna walk across. Oh, I know you. Don't be in the state that we go. Just as a heads up, because we sold out. And of course, everybody's like, oh, we didn't know. We didn't know. We posted lots of stuff about we might sell out. <laughs> we could possibly, and I'm not saying definitely, <laughs> after talk to Denise, we might offer a few more tickets. If that's what we can do, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> All right. Can we have one more, one more vote? Just to, there's a, with the approval of the taste testing event, just so we have the motion. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll take a motion that we also approve the taste testing event located on Fourth Circuit Road and Broad. I'll second it. All right. Thank you. Any Sorry. further discussion? Nope. Yes, I'll go through the rolls. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Good luck, guys. Can't wait to see you. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for your support. And please keep us in mind. I, I mentioned to James, like, if there's anything we can do for you guys as a town um, in the future, if you guys are doing an event or something like that, and we can donate some beer, please don't be strangers, okay? Thank you. Great. Concerts, I believe, coming up in the summer, don't we, James? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we always love doing stuff for charity, so just keep us posted, okay? Yeah, we'll be in touch. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. right. Uh, it right. brings us to York County Budget Committee caucuses information. <clears throat> caucuses to elect municipal and public representatives to the York County Budget Committee are scheduled for Wednesday, April 13th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at the York County Courthouse, 45 Kenny Bunk Road in Alfred, Maine. <clears throat> so, as... Any elected official that wants to be on the budget caucus can uh, run for this. Is um, I'm going to run away from it <laughs> as fast as I can. Um, I believe we have one open seat yeah. on the committee right now for this district. So is um, we one elected official is a uh, open seat. Um, <clears throat> the other one. Well, there's, um, oh, I can't remember who the uh, guy from Lebanon, I believe, the, the, the uh, one of the selectmen over there. And uh, and then a public, uh, public one is uh, Dana LaJoy. Oh, yeah. So, is, um, <clears throat> but, <clears throat> so I made that announcement. If anybody wants to go for it, go for it. <laughs> All right, so then we come to the Community Development Block Grant. Um, so with um, the town, we're able to apply for CDBG grants. Um, with Great Falls Construction was a co-sponsor. Uh, this grant is to do the facade for the uh, building here at 12 Sullivan Street, the building that's being constructed right now. Uh, and Great Falls Construction will pay the, the match funds and any fees associated with this project. Um, we did a similar um, CDBG grant about 15 years ago with a woodworking company, where the town can the town can apply for the grant right through the town. Um, I believe I don't have the number of I think it's about the facade that they're you know, at seventy five thousand dollars if they're requesting. The grant to help them see fund the project a little bit, uh, help, help finish the building. So I'm just seeking um, your authorization to sign um, the final application. Yeah, I, I attended. I actually attended the uh, public hearing. I was the only one. This is there. We lasted about three minutes. Um, is uh, yeah. This is something that you know the. 
the state of Maine has through their uh, development projects. And you know, as James said, it was was, it was um, a little harbor window we did it with, or was it the the one out on on Route Nine? Right, yeah, traditional. Yep, yeah, that's right. And the same thing is we we went through it. They they paid all the all the fees and everything associated with it. And uh, we we just basically the the cosigner of it. <clears throat> Any questions? Any comments? Well, yeah, that's good. Well, we're going to angle the parking spots in at an angle. We haven't decided that yet. For a long, for a long Sullivan. Yeah. Might it might be a good idea. Yeah, it was what we talked about, but yeah. I so think we'll gain. Get a substantial amount. I don't. Yeah. I think we should. But we don't want his problem to be up because they don't have parking. We. It's something we should look at. If we can do it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's, that's when we hire that engineering firm to exactly. oversee things. We'll talk to yeah. one of them. All right. So, looking for a motion to uh, enter into the agreement for the community development block grant. I make the motion. Second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> I'll go through the roll. Is Mike? Yes. Noah. Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. So that brings us to our quick claim deeds. We have none, abatements and supplements. Hi, Karen, are you with us? Yes, I'm right here. Hello. How are you tonight? Hello, everyone. Hi, Karen. Hi, <laughs> All right, we have a few things for tonight. Um, the first one is an abatement. Uh, for um, this is a this is a um, a vacant parcel um, in which the property owner thought that um, uh, a split hadn't been processed from back in 2014, and as it turned out, when we did the you know and they they submitted an abatement thinking that they've been overvalued all these years. Um, and they have not. We reviewed the plans, we reviewed the deeds, and uh, we both determined, after he had already submitted the, the abatement, that um, uh, that the lot split that created the map, um, our 54 lot 31-2, was accurately processed in 2014, and that the current assessment is not an overvaluation. So because the property owner failed to prove that the property was over-assessed, it is recommended that this abatement uh, request be denied. Any questions for Karen? Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little confused. So this is this is an abatement for the, for the, for the most recent year, or recent two years, right? Yes. And, and but they think because of something in 2014 that their property is being misvalued? Yes. So they were they had split off a piece from this. This is the mother lot, the remaining land, and the split occurred in 2014. And and for some reason, and there was some, they thought that the uh, the split didn't occur. So that, um, but it did, and they were they maybe. They were just looking at their assessment for the first time, perhaps in a couple of years, and we had the revaluation in 2019, so the values did go up, um, but the, it's certainly not an overvaluation. Um, the lot split was processed as um, uh, per the deed back in 2014. Okay, I, I have a clearer picture now. Any other questions for Karen? No, it sounds like he's already uh, aware that we're going to deny this, or most likely, yeah. presumably deny this. So, yeah. okay. is that that a yeah, motion? Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to deny the uh, the abatement for lot uh, fifty-four dash thirty-one-one. Second it. <clears throat> no further discussion. I will we'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah. Yes. Linda. Yes. 
Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. Next one, Karen. Next one is um, uh, um, a, a 50.6 acre parcel located on Lower Cranberry Meadow Road. Um, it's been enrolled in the Tree Growth Program for several years. Uh, the owners are George and Janie Gendron, and they obtained the property um, back in March of 2006. Uh, then the property owners split off an 18 acre parcel. Uh, they split it to Gendron Estates LLC back in, uh, in 2006, shortly after they purchased this, this parcel. The property owner's name of the subject property was incorrectly changed to Gendron Estates LLC. And then it was changed to Cranberry Meadows LLC when the LLC changed names uh, back in June 16th of 2010. So all these years it's been assessed to the wrong owner. However, George Gendron is the sole member of the Gendron Estates LLC and Cranberry Meadows LLC. He recently stopped by the assessing office and made assessing aware of this error. Therefore, because the subject property was assessed to the wrong owner, Cranberry Meadows LLC, it is recommended that an abatement be granted in the amount of $386.13. And uh, have the abatement calculation form that follows the memo. Yeah, looking at the supplement that's going to follow, I'll make a motion to accept the abatement. Um, I'll second it. A motion and a second. Do we have any other discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right, next. Uh, you called that one. The next one is a supplement to go with the abatement that we just uh, processed. So it's this oh, is the, right. So it's the same parcel. Um, it was uh, it was not taxed um, to the correct owner, mm. and we are uh, recommending um, that this property, uh, because it was assessed to the wrong owner, Cranberry Meadows LLC, it is recommended that a supplemental tax be issued to the correct owner. George R. and Janie Gendron in the amount of $386.13 for the parcel map lot R39-11. I move to accept the supplement. I'll second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. We're on the roll, Karen. <laughs> and our last one for tonight is the uh, farmland penalty. Uh, the subject property was uh, uh, placed nine acres in farmland classification in 2020. Uh, this classification provides for valuation of land based on its current use as farmland rather than its potential fair market value uh, for uses other than agriculture. On March 31st, uh, 2022, the assessing office received a written request from the owners, Zachary H. and Andrea S. Groff, to remove all acreage classified as farmland effective immediately. The farmland penalty is assessed um, per the state law. Uh, the penalty is equal to the taxes that would have been assessed had the property been assessed at its fair market value as of April 1st for the preceding five years, less any taxes paid during this period, plus interest on the difference. If the land has been in the farmland program less than five years, the penalty is based on the number of years the, pen the property has been in the program. So this property has only been in the program for two years. Um, so please see the farmland penalty calculation spreadsheet for the determination of the penalty. Um, this penalty uh, spreadsheet was also provided to the property owner, so they are aware of this amount. Therefore, it's recommended that you approve the supplemental tax bill for this farmland penalty in the amount of $823.47 uh, to the property owner for the removal of nine acres from farmland classification. Any questions for Karen? No. Nope. 
I will make a motion to accept the farmland penalty on R048-1. Second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Ms. Mike? Yes. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thanks for have, have a good night. Thanks. All right. Second public comment. We have no public here. We have no executive session tonight. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> other business and non-agenda items. Anybody have anything to bring up? No. Nope. I'm good. <laughs> Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. We have a motion in a second. I'm not going to bother going through the roll. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Thank you, John.